Hey guys. Okay, so this recording is for our brand new unit um, 9.1. So the title of this is called Polar Coordinates. Okay, so up until today, many of you, I wouldn't say all of you, many of you have not seen this. Okay, we have always been graphing on these kind of coordinates, right? This is called Cartesian. Okay, in this book, they also call it rectangular. Rectangular is when we have X and Y, okay? So the same thing as Cartesian. So today, I am introducing you to, if you have not already been introduced in physics, okay, um, a new set of coordinates called polar coordinates. So in polar coordinates, this line right here, that line is, we used to call it X, now it's called the polar axis, okay? Then, technically, there's a dot at the center, okay? There's this huge dot at the center, or a small dot, okay? A dot doesn't have size, by the way. A point does not have size, okay? There's a dot at the center called the pole, okay? So, check this out. We are going to use angles to graph, okay? And just like any circle, this right here is pi over 2, aka 90 degrees, okay? This over here is going to be pi, okay? And this over here, again, is 3 pi over 2. So the, the radiance uh, measurement of the circle has not changed. This right here is going to be pi over 6. Now, how do I know? Well, I'm taking the first quadrant, which is, what, 90 degrees, right? And look, it's this particular um, graph is, or grid is divided or divisible by 3. So I know each one is about 30 degrees. So 30 degrees in radians is about pi over 6. So this is pi over 3. There is no mark for pi over 4. So you have to know that pi over 4 goes straight in the middle, okay? So if there are no marks for pi over 4, you make them, okay? So 3 pi over 4. Okay, and then so on and so on. You get the, the message, right? So if you can see it, um, then mark them. So make sure you divide them up evenly um, or try your best to. Just like when we were graphing Cartesian, uh, we try to make the tick marks evenly, okay? We don't go, okay, let me tell you what not to do, okay? We don't go, hmm, one unit is right there, and then this, and then like this is two units, okay? That would not be okay. So make sure we make them evenly when possible, okay? That means when you're making your mark, oh, why do I keep erasing? When you're making your mark, you try your best to make the marks even, okay? So what is a polar coordinate? Polar coordinate, we are going to use r comma theta, where r is the distance, from the pole and theta is the angle formed by the polar axis and array. Okay, array means that it starts on one side and it has an arrow on the other side. So array usually means only one of the sides is going on forever, okay? Array from the pole through the point, okay? And just so we have a better understanding, um, we will now have um, negative radius as, as well, okay? Okay to have negative radius, okay? Negative R, okay? We are used to having negative theta because we know if we have negative theta, we are going clockwise. Now we have negative R. That means we're going to go the opposite direction, okay? So that leads me to example one. Go ahead and go all the way to example one. Don't worry about the other ones. We will do those later. Example one, plot each point given in polar coordinates. So in your homework, if you don't have these grids printed, okay, then make your polar axis, which is a line. You are giving 7 pi over 4, so you're going to need this arrow. It tells me you are about to go counterclockwise because there's a positive um, radiant 7 pi over 4. 
you will need a ray from the center to demonstrate where 7 pi over 4 ends. Okay? And then, because the radius is 5, you will count 5 tick marks. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you make your dots right there. I already have these tiny circles in there, so technically I don't have to make my tick marks. But if you don't have them, then you have to make those tick marks. So that's what we need um, to graph out this pair, okay, this order pair. So what do I need? I need the polar axis drawn out, if you, okay. I need you to show me the angle and the arrow, okay, it means directional. Then you need to draw a ray, I'm repeating all of this, okay, where the angle is about to end is 7 pi over 4. Then you need to make your dots however many radius out that is. Okay, so all of those things are required. Okay, so let's move on to B. B, again, I'm going to draw my polar axis of the pole. Negative pi over 6, negative on going this way. I will now draw my pi over 6, okay, because since it's negative, it's going to be clockwise. Now I need three units. I will not do tick marks because I already have mini circles, but I will go three circles out to demonstrate that is my radius. Okay. Next, I will have an angle at zero, which is right on the polar axis, aka it used to be on the x-axis. Well, I have a negative radius. Oh my, what does that really mean? Okay. A negative radius means you go the other side yes you do okay one and two and you make a dot so you don't make the dot where the angle ends you make the dot on completely the other side so this point right here is negative two comma zero okay? similarly to d i have a negative radius again oh my okay here's my polar axis pi over three it's all the way up here Okay, now technically that's where my pi over 3 angle ends, okay? But I do not make my radius there. I draw another ray and I count 6 units out. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Only 5 there, so make another one. So extend this. There you go. So that's my radius of 6. So notice again, I do not, I'm repeating, do not make the radius dot on the angle you make it on the other side, okay? And that concludes our video notes for today.